Okay, we're back with our third example in a series of verifying trigonometric identities. The one that we're going to try to verify right now is secant alpha minus cosine alpha equals sine alpha times tan alpha. So typically, again, we try to work on the side that appears to be more challenging to deal with. In this case, that's going to be the left-hand side because dealing with subtraction um, is usually more challenging than dealing with multiplication. So let's go ahead and work on the left-hand side. So in this case, what I'm going to try to do is immediately um, try to convert um, anything that can be turned in, or written in terms of sines and cosines into that. So secant alpha can be written in terms of cosines. That's 1 over cosine. So 1 over cosine alpha minus 1 over cosine alpha. And we're trying to show that that's equal to sine alpha tan alpha. Now one of the strategies that we can use is if we have um, expressions, especially one that's a fraction and one that doesn't appear to be a fraction at the time, we try to combine these two together. So we're trying to complete this subtraction. So we're going to need a common denominator in order to do that. So in this case, this is cosine over 1. So it looks like the common denominator has to be cosine. So I'm going to multiply this by cosine alpha over cosine alpha, which is going to leave us with 1 over cosine alpha minus cosine alpha times cosine alpha is cosine squared alpha all over cosine alpha. And again, that should equal sine alpha tan alpha. So now that we have a common denominator, we can actually add these two, or there'll be subtraction, but subtract one fraction from the other. And when we do that, we're going to get 1 minus cosine squared alpha all over cosine alpha. And again, that's going to equal, hopefully, sine alpha, tan alpha, if this is an identity. Now, if you remember from your Pythagorean identities, 1 minus cosine squared alpha is sine squared alpha. So I'm going to replace 1 minus cosine squared alpha with sine squared alpha. And again, that's going to be over cosine alpha. And that's going to equal sine alpha tan alpha. Now this is actually pretty good because sine squared alpha, remember, is sine alpha times sine alpha. So if we break that up, we'll get sine alpha times sine alpha all over cosine alpha, and that should equal sine alpha tan alpha. And if we look, we have our sine alpha right here. And then sine alpha over cosine alpha is tan alpha. So our final step, and I'm going to have to write it over here, sorry about that, would be sine alpha times sine alpha over cosine alpha equals sine alpha tan alpha. So sine alpha times sine alpha over cosine alpha, we can replace that with tan alpha. And again, we verified another identity. See you in the next one.